So in this video, I want to look at the functional dependence of uh, recombination and generation on the energy level of the trap. What I mean is by that is, you know, suppose I have a semiconductor and this is the conduction band and this is the valence band. What I'm interested in is, you know, how do these recombination and generation rate depends upon where these trap levels are located, or, you know, the energy of these uh, trap levels. So there could be a recombination process where this electron over here goes to this trap state and then recombines with the hole over here. Or there could be a generation process where an electron in the valence band, it goes to the trap state and then goes to the conduction band. So I want to see how these, uh, these uh, either this recombination rate or these generation rate depends upon where this trap level is located. So I'll start with you know something that I derived uh, in the last video, this horrible looking uh, formula, you know, which was given by Shockley, Reed, uh, and Hall. So I'll start with this, and then try to see you know how how the uh, how the generation and recombination rate uh, depends upon the energy of the trap level. So this is a universal formula. It gives me both generation and recombination. So, you know, when I have excess carrier, that is, you know, when my NP is greater than NI square, then I get, you know, from this formula, I get a net positive rate and I call that uh, recombination. And when NP is less than NI square, so this, this term is now, this term is now negative and that's what I call as net uh, generation of carriers. So now let's, let's start with the recombination first. So let, let me start uh, with the recombination. And I want to look at what is the dependence of recombination on the, le on the, on the position of my trap level. And uh, what I'll further do is, you know, I'll, so I, I'll further say that I have an n-type uh, semiconductor. So, you know, I'll make this assumption that I have an n-type semiconductor. And I'll say further uh, that I have a low level of uh, injection. So in that case, what, what I can write is, you know, in an n-type semiconductor, I can denote the number of electrons by, of course, n. And since it's an n-type semiconductor, I can further give it a subscript uh, of n, and I can further give it a subscript of zero, which indicates that, you know, this number of electrons is, is what was there when there was equilibrium. So I, I use this scrub script N0 to describe uh, n-type semiconductor and then equilibrium in n-type semiconductor. So I can further write the number of uh, holes under equilibrium in this n-type semiconductor and denote it with this, again, this subscript N0. Where, of course, since it's in equilibrium, my n time N0 into p-type N0 should be equal to Ni squared. So further, if I if I have low level injection, what I what I get, I can you know assume is that my my uh, my 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 density of my majority carriers, that is the density of my electrons, does not change much even when I'm uh, you know when I'm in non equilibrium, and I have n you know roughly remains the same as what it was in equilibrium. Of course, there would be a you know a large change in the number of uh, holes, which is the minority carrier. So you know, just 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 uh, just taking these uh, simple, uh, you know, rewriting these things in equilibrium. Now you know, let me try to substitute and see what's happening uh, when there is a recombination happening. So uh, you know, I can take this expression and you know, I can write down the constant terms, and then instead of uh, n, I can write down this to be equal to n n zero because you know the number of electrons. What I'm saying is is not changing, and you know number of holes is of course changing. So I need to write that down, and instead of n i square, I can write it as n n zero times p n zero. You know, so I, I use this uh, formula to, and replace it for n i square. And further in my in my denominator, what I see is that I can write it down as n as n n zero, and then I can write plus p plus you know this other term which has the energy dependence. All right, so now I see you know, uh, n n zero being common in the numerator. So I divide both the numerator and denominator by n n zero. So you know, n n zero vanishes from here, it vanishes uh, from here. 
and also this term becomes one and then I get P divided number of uh, holes divided by the number of electrons in equilibrium and you know I, I'll assume that you know this is a I'll, I'll, I'll not assume I know that this is a very small number because this was an n-type doped semiconductor and I'm still assuming low level injection so number of holes increase but you know it, it's still much lower as compared to the number of uh, electrons I had so I'll ignore this term and then I get this 2ni divided by n0. So let me collect all the terms together. So, you know, first let me collect the constant terms, sigma vth and t. And then I get, you know, p minus p and not. So, you know, I get this term is essentially equal to the increase in the number of uh, holes. And this is now divided by 1 plus two times n i divided by n n zero into cosh of e t minus e i by k t. So now, you know, this is my net rate of recombination and I'm interested in you know, how, how it varies as a function of this uh, energy level of the trap. So now, now, you know, I see there's no, no dependence in the numerator. The dependence in this uh, denominator is coming from this term. And this is multiplied by this 2 times ni divided by nn0. And, you know, I expect this term to be very small because this term should be, essentially what I'm saying is intrinsic carrier density divided by the number of, uh, you know, electrons I had in equilibrium in an n-type semiconductor. So, you know, this should be much higher than Ni. So, this, this term should be much less than 1. So, what I expected is, you know, my recombination rate should remain essentially constant as a function of, as a function of energy unless this term starts to become very large, right? So, if, if this term becomes very large as compared to 1, then multiplied by this very small term, it will become, it will still become significant. So, looking at, you know, this Cauch function or hyperbolic cosine function, I looked at, you know, this previously also, but this has essentially a functional dependence where it rises exponentially. Uh, so, you know, this is Cauch of x and it rises exponentially depending upon x, no matter whether you go in positive direction or go in negative direction. So, this term is is really minimum when you have uh, your x equal to zero or your trap energy level is equal to your intrinsic uh, energy level in your semiconductor. Either you move up or you move down from that uh, intrinsic uh, energy level, this term will increase. But it's multiplied, you know, it's, it's toned down by this uh, multiplication factor which is uh, much less than one. So what can I expect for, you know, my, 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 my recombination rate as a function of energy. So if I plot that, you know, what I can expect is, so I'll draw this as my trap energy level and I want to plot my recombination rate. In fact, you know, let me simplify to, to make a fair comparison. I'll multiply, I'll divide it by the maximum recombination rate. So I'll, I'll say that, you know, I'm plotting it on a logarithmic chart and what I'm plotting is my recombination rate divided by my maximum recombination rate. And I already know my maximum recombination rate, it occurs when I have ET equal to EI. So, you know, this axis, if I'm drawing it from EI, so at, you know, when my trap level is equal to my intrinsic energy level, that is when I get my maximum recombination rate. And further, you know, if this term is, uh, is uh, this Cauch term, if it's, if it's, you know, not too large, what I'll expect is this recombination rate to remain constant. And then when, you know, it, ET and EI, the separation is large enough, so this exponential term, this Cauch terms becomes very high, so the denominator becomes high. So this recombination rate, I'll expect it, it will fall down and, you know, it will essentially it will become uh, zero or it will become very less. So this is how I expect my recombination rate to behave as a function of uh, my trap energy level. So now, now let's look at how the generation rate will behave. 
So now let's look at the case when I have net generation. So I have net generation when my NP or you know my my number of electrons multiplied by my number of uh, holes is is less than what I have in equilibrium. So I need net generation to bring it back to equilibrium. So if if that is the case, so my NP is you know much less than NI square. So I can I can or what I'm looking at this horrible and ugly looking formula again. I want to simplify it. So you know in in this term, again what I'll assume is that you know my NP is is not only less than NI but you know it's it's much less than NI square. So my you know my semiconductor is depleted of these uh, mobile carriers. So in that case, you know my NP essentially this term it vanishes. It becomes uh, zero. And also my N and P, they much they become you know much less than as compared to N I. So I can you know I can ignore these these term as compared to N I as well. So in that case, you know what I'm left with again, you know I collect the constant term first, sigma V T H N T, and then you know I'm left with the N I square or minus N I square in the numerator, and then in the denominator I have plus two N I. Again, cosh of E T minus E I by K T, and you know I I, I divide uh, this by N I, so you know I can take off this N I over here, and then this N I term vanishes over here. So isn't it nice if you have this eraser? So now this this term is giving me the net rate uh, of uh, generation of uh, carriers, and now I want to look at the energy, how it depends upon the energy of this uh, trap level. So again, the energy dependence is coming from this uh, cosh term, but as compared to my recombination, there's you know there's no protecting factor, there's no uh, low new you know multiplying factor which is preventing the fury of this uh, cosh term. So essentially, as soon as my as soon as my uh, trap energy level is you know is either is is less than uh, EI or this is uh, greater than EI. So you know depending upon whether this term is positive or negative. In either case, this uh, cosh term will become you know it will rise up or blow up exponentially. So my generation rate you know will will drop up uh, exponentially as well. You know if I'm not if my trap is not at the intrinsic energy level. So what would I expect my you know my my dependence uh, to look like so you know again I can make a plot and I can write uh, the trap energy level as the x-axis and my net uh, net uh, generation rate as uh, on the y-axis and you know again I can normalize this uh, with respect to the maximum uh, generation rate and again this will occur at at the position uh, where uh, where I have uh, my trap energy level equal to my intrinsic uh, energy level and again, I'll make this plot on a log scale with respect to generation. So what I'll what, what will happen in this case is you know this my generation uh, would be maximum when my trap energy level is equivalent to my you know intrinsic energy level, but it will you know fall off or it will taper off uh, very rapidly because uh, this cosh term will become very large, and so you know this denominator becomes very large, so this net generation rate will essentially fall off uh, very uh, very fast if I move my trap away from my intrinsic energy level. So you know, let, let's look at you know how how these two recombination and generation how they're uh, dependence upon the trap uh, trap energy level compares. So if I look at you know the process of recombination, I'll just look that you know it it remain constant over a range of uh, energy levels of the trap, and then you know it when this uh, when this energy level moves too far away from from my intrinsic energy level, then it starts to degrade, and it uh, you know it again it degrades off. Uh, but in the case of generation, this degrades very rapidly as compared, even if you know my trap energy level moves a little bit away from my intrinsic energy level. So you're looking at from from the from the you know from from the band diagram perspective, what it's saying you know if I have a trap energy level, 
and uh, I have my my recombination process, which is you know this electron going into this trap energy level and then combining with the hole in the valence energy level. You know this has some dependence. Uh, you know this has some tolerance to you know how how far this energy level can move. So you know if I move uh, move uh, you know my trap energy level within this range, maybe you know I still get recombination. But if I get you know too ahead of too ahead of myself and I move this trap energy level too far, then my, my recombination rate, you know, falls off uh, very rapidly. But, so, you know, it has, you know, it depends upon the trap energy level, but, you know, it's, it's relatively easier for this process to occur. You know, this electron to go down, just like, you know, if you want to go down when you're, you know, getting grades for a score, it's uh, getting grades for an exam or a course, it's very easy to do, you know, you, you, you still get, you know, you can not work, you can, you know, for, you know, not study for your end term, do bad in your projects, and, you know, you will, you will get to a lower state. But what about the opposite case where, you know, I have a, when I have, you know, an electron uh, in my valence band and, you know, it wants to go up to a higher state. So, you know, it wants to go to this trap level state or, you know, it wants to move up, uh, it wants to move up uh, in uh, in this uh, grading scheme. So, you know, for that to happen, what I'm, I'm seeing is, you know, from, from this formula that, you know, this you know, so for you know, for you to get good grades, or you know, for for you know, any good thing, or you know, moving up in life, you know, everything has to line up. You know, the positions of the star has to be lined. Uh, you know, so in, we see over here as well. So this for this thing to occur, occur for generation to occur, this trap energy level has to be exactly, or you know, has to be very close to the intrinsic energy level. Otherwise, what I see is my generation rate it falls off very rapidly.